Member for Saanich North End Islands. I came equipped today with a different question about a different subject, but my hope is, is that, that this can be the response to um, these uh, stories over the weekend can be not just a response from the ministers, but also a, a response from this legislative assembly. And we, we have the ability to do that. Mr. Speaker, over the past few weeks, the world's attention has become focused on Ferry Creek because thousands of British Columbians are showing up to protest this provincial government's lack of protection of these rare and endangered ecosystems. Two weeks ago, I raised the Auditor General's report saying BC is not doing enough to follow its own policy on conservation. Just after that, I highlighted the mapping that a trio of scientists have done showing where the most endangered old forests are and where it needs to be immediately deferred from cutting. Today, I'd like to add that there's a significant amount of federal money on the table, money that BC could use to conserve these forests and support communities through transition. The federal government has put $2.3 billion on the table to expand protected areas, and that could be a game changer, Mr. Speaker, if the NDP chooses to take it. Through you to government, my question is to the Minister of Forests. Will she commit to using every federal dollar that is on the table to protect these endangered old forests and to stop the battles playing out on the ground today? Premier. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker, and I thank the member for his question. And uh, it's very true. He knows full well that I'm intimate with the area, uh, Ferry Creek and, and Environs. It's my home community. I know it uh, intimately. I also know the Pachidat, and uh, I also know uh, the Huayat, and I know the Dididat, and it is their territory. We've talked about this in this legislature. At this time, more than ever, we need to acknowledge their rights and title to that territory and sovereignty, in my opinion, over those lands. Having said that, and I got a, a movement from the member, and I, I look forward to a, perhaps a discussion either in here or offline about that, but uh, specifically to the question about federal resources. I, too, have been hearing of promises of federal resources. I've been asking about those federal resources, and I'm hopeful that they will turn up. Uh, but I've heard of federal resources in the past as well, uh, and they have not shown up. I do uh, understand that there are opportunities here. We have been pursuing that. Uh, in government-to-government uh, -government discussions through my Intergovernmental Relations Secretary, as well as in direct conversations with federal officials. Member for Sandwich Northern Island, supplemental. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, uh, and appreciate the, uh, the Premier uh, highlighting the, the complexity of the situation that we have in these particular areas. Although I think that it's fair to say that the response of British Columbians, the response of people on southern Vancouver Island to Ferry Creek or to specific locations is actually a response about the protection of these last remaining ecosystem, these last remaining endangered ecosystems, the, the, the protection of, the, of old growth. And, you know, the, the federal government put $2.3 billion in their budget, and it may or may not be there and may or may not be available immediately. But in the B recent BC budget, there wasn't anything no money. So it, it's in the federal budget. It, it's nowhere to be found in the provincial budget. No money to implement the recommendations of the old growth review panel that the Premier promised to implement fully, all recommendations, in the last election. TJ Watt from the Ancient Forest Alliance says because the federal uh, investment, the BC NDP, has been handed the keys to ensure that much of the grandest, most endangered old growth forests can be protected. The federal government is going to have the money on the table. Is the BC government going to chase that money down? Again, my question is to the Minister of Forests. What specific actions is she taking to find out if that money is available? And if not, go to the Treasury Board to ensure that there's money that British Columbia is putting on the table to follow through on the commitments that the BC NDP government made British Columbians in the 2020 election to implement all of the recommendations, specifically recommendation number six is a first step to defer these sensitive uh, ecosystems. Premier. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. And my colleague will know that it was this government that appointed the Old Growth Commission. Uh, and we were happy to receive the report and in fact so happy that we said we would embrace all of the recommendations and implement them. The member will know that there were significant deferrals, some 200,000 hectares, immediately because there had been discussions with Indigenous nations about that and approval and, and in fact requests were made to do so. 
On the other areas, like Ferry Creek, that discussion had yet to take place and is ongoing. Uh, I, I, again, I, I appreciate the member's passion. I am passionate about old trees, and I, this will uh, come as no surprise to anyone who knows me. No surprise whatsoever. But there are complex issues. The member understands that. I know members from the official opposition understand that. If we're going to make a seismic change in how forestry is done, we need to have buy-in from everyone. That's why tomorrow the Minister of Forest and I will be issuing an intentions paper that will lay out not just how we will address old growth, but how we will address forestry across the province. The time is now to take action when the public's uh, attention to these issues as, is at its highest. There have been times in our history when uh, forestry has been neglected and forgotten. It is certainly not being neglected and forgotten today. That is a good thing in my mind. We need to take the opportunity that this moment in time presents to us, a very capable report lauded by all those who've had the opportunity to read it, and a government's committed to implementing it. I think the stars are aligning. We're going to have good news tomorrow on the intentions paper and more good news about old growth logging on Vancouver Island later this summer.